Hey guys, back with another educational video. I apologize for leaving you hanging for a few weeks there. Uh, we've had a little bit of a crazy month. Uh, we've been traveling out to Holly's Meet. Uh, we're moving to a different house and uh, we're about to leave for Australia for our tour. So if you guys are in Australia, you'll definitely want to check us out. We're going to be in Sydney uh, June 15th and 16th doing a seminar and day camp. And then we're going to be in Brisbane on June 17th. And you can go to my website, biolane.com. I'll put a link up here in a card. You click on that, it'll take you there. You can find out about uh, the seminars and camp we're hosting. Hope to see you guys there. Today, I want to talk about cardio. <sighs> uh, for those of you out there who use cardio as a tool, um, let me cover a few different things. First off, why would we want to use cardio? Well, um, if you go back to my energy balance series, um, the amount of fat you can lose depends on your energy balance. You have to create a, an energy deficit. And part of that can be through caloric restriction, but part of that can also be through increased activity. Uh, and for most of us, it's not practical to lift weights all day. Uh, it's also probably not optimal. So we can do cardiovascular work to increase our caloric output. Also, there's some health benefits associated with uh, cardiovascular work, but there's been a lot of debate about what is best for maintaining strength and hypertrophy with regards to cardio work. There's a lot of research that shows that resistance training and cardio have negative interferences, but more so cardio towards resistance training. So if you do resistance training, it doesn't seem to negatively impact the cardiovascular adaptations from cardio. However, doing cardio appears to significantly negatively impact the strength and hypertrophy adaptations from resistance training. So what kind of cardio, what modality, how much, what intensity, these are all questions that have been asked over the years. There was a recent meta-analysis that was reviewed in mass by uh, Greg Knuckles, and he did a great job of, of breaking this research down. And they found a few, I think, take-home points that are really important. Uh, and I'll put the link to mass uh, as well. The first one is that uh, HIIT, high intensity interval training, produces more fat loss per unit time. Th that's not a surprise because you're doing more intense exercise. Um, so case closed, right? Why not just have everybody do HIIT since it's gonna produce more fat loss? Not so fast. Uh, HIIT's gonna have a greater impact on your recovery. If you've ever gone out and done uh, interval sprints, or really hard hit session on the bike or elliptical or sled dragging or something of that nature, uh, you're gonna notice that uh, you can feel pretty drained afterwards and uh, it's gonna have an impact on your recovery. It's gonna take time to recover from that. So it's not, so, you can only go to the well so many times as my coach Andres likes to say. So there's that downside. Uh, low intensity steady state cardio is it, also more convenient. Um, a lot of people like to scroll Instagram while doing their low intensity cardio on the treadmill or elliptical or watch a TV show, read a book, listen to an audio book, what have you, uh, go walk their dog, those sorts of things. So you could actually like kind of sort of multitask while you're doing low intensity cardio, which makes it attractive to a lot of people. And also I can tell you that when I was getting ready for my shows, um, if I had to go do a hit session, I would have to almost psych myself up like I would lifting. Uh, whereas obviously low intensity, you just get up, walk out the door and go walk or, or, or what have you. Um, so it's a little bit more convenient and practical. Um, now what the recent meta-analysis really found was that interestingly, HIIT has less of an impact to hypertrophy than low intensity steady state cardio. It appears that HIIT may be more beneficial for maintaining hypertrophy than low intensity steady state. Also, it appears that low intensity steady state and HIIT are both better than moderate intensity cardio. That moderate intensity cardio, kind of like jogging, particularly jogging, probably because of the eccentric loading, uh, seems to have a negative effect on hypertrophy. So, now what's interesting is HIIT does seem to have a slightly negative effect on strength. Um, for those of you who've ever gone out and run sprints and tried squatting the next day, probably wasn't the most fun thing in the world. Um, the other interesting thing is the negative interference appears to be body part specific. 
So in a study, in studies where they've done lower body cardio, they show no effects, no negative effects on upper body hypertrophy and strength. So if you were somebody, now I don't know that they've shown the opposite, but one thing you could do is if you were somebody really concerned about your lower body strength and hypertrophy, you could do upper body cardio. Um, battle ropes, sled dragging with just your arms, um, a rower, these sorts of things. You could use that to hopefully maintain more of your lower body strength and hypertrophy. So for example, if you were getting ready for a bodybuilding show and legs were a weak point, like me, you could do more of that upper body cardio and perhaps maintain more of your muscle mass. Uh, finally, what's interesting is they found that the, the negative impacts on strength and hypertrophy almost completely went away if the cardio session, either hit or less, was performed more than 24 hours away from the resistance training session. Uh, so it appears that these adaptations or these, these negative impacts seem to be somewhat short term. So whether it's an energy or an overtraining or, or what have you, it appears to be relatively short term. Now that said, I think there probably is a limit to this. So if you went out and ran a marathon on Monday and then went to squat on Wednesday, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some negative effects on your strength and hypertrophy. So what can we use this to make practical recommendations? Uh, I would say that cardio is a tool, but a tool that can be overused. Uh, and there is probably some negative interference on strength and hypertrophy, especially during a caloric deficit. So I would say use cardio uh, somewhat sparingly, maybe hit sessions one to two times a week, maybe three if you are somebody who has plenty of muscle mass and you're looking more for maximal body fat loss uh, and you're not so concerned about your performance during your, your training sessions. If you're going to do your hit sessions, uh, try to do them on an off day from lifting. So if you know, if you normally train in the afternoons, Maybe do a hit session the morning of the day before you're going to train. So on your off day, do it the hit that morning. Do your training session the evening, the day after. Um, if you're somebody who is has a weak upper body and you're wanting to maintain more uh, body mass there, do lower body cardio. And if you're somebody who has a weak lower body and wants to maintain more muscle mass there, do upper body cardio. Um, if you're going to do it on the same day, probably better to do your training in the morning and do your cardio in the evening. The more you can space them out, the, the better it seems to work. So it may seem like a great idea, well, if we can do it 24 hours away, there's no problems. But if you're resistance training five days a week, that leaves only two days for cardio if that's the only time you're doing it. This may not be practical for some people who need more cardio to elicit more body fat loss. So in those cases, I would say do your hit on your off days since that is the most taxing and difficult on recovery. And then do your cardio sessions, uh, your steady state cardio sessions after your training sessions. Hopefully you train in the morning and do cardio in the evening. If you can't do that, do your training session, then immediately after you can still do your less cardio session. And so those are kind of the priorities in terms of optimization. And Keep in mind that everything is a tool in the toolbox and we just have to find out how to properly use that. Uh, and this is what actually, interestingly, it's cool to see these recommendations because it's very in line to what I've recommended to my clients over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, sometimes we, we have um, things that we get shown to be wrong on. Uh, I can say that mostly I got this right. Uh, a lot of it just through my experience of using these different forms of cardio and how I felt and how I responded. But uh, some of this stuff was very new and very helpful. So hopefully you guys can use this in your own training, in your own fat loss. Um, and if you have any other questions, please leave them below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.